This is from an unimpeachable source. I have a number of people feeding me information in the Secret Service. And Ben, I'm going to tell you something. I'm not defending or anybody. I'm not anybody's spokesperson. The agents I'm talking to, and there are many, are over, they are overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly saying the same thing. This is a colossal apocalyptic embarrassment to an agency I was proud of. There is no one, no one defending this thing. But one of them fed to me last night, and this, if this pans out to be true, and I have no reason to believe it isn't based on who told me this, that that was supposed to be a local police department counter sniper post. There were two USSS, Secret Service counter sniper teams. That was supposed to be an additional one. Apparently, for some reason, I don't care to speculate on, it's not what I do, that post never showed up. Now, this is why you had in the beginning that statement, I don't know if you remember it, but it was from a few days ago where the Secret Service spokesperson appeared to pawn the blame off on the locals. That's what that was about. Now, even if that is the case, which I believe it is based on my source that say this post did not show up. Now, there, you know what happens when you lie, Ben? Again, you know, being a lawyer, you know how this is with clients. They forget their own lies. So first they tried to blame it on the local PD. And then when they got backlash on that, they said, oh, it was the slope of the roof. And now that they're getting backlash on that, they don't know what to do. They don't want to tell the truth that they just never checked the post that he showed up and the post didn't. So now they're burying themselves. So I'm hearing also, this is point number two. Again, I, I think this is the first time we're saying it in detail on the show that there are very strict orders coming from the Biden White House and the DHS to the Secret Service Director to basically shut her mouth about this or she's out. And that's why you've seen Mayorkas so vigorously defend this failed Secret Service Director um, on video because he basically knows she has all the cookies in a cookie jar. Band, 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 band. Gone forever. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Sean of Third Relify, and I hope you're having a beautiful day today. So we're going to talk about J13, the attempted assassination of Donald Trump. I, I know all the news is, is about that, and I've been trying to get away from that, but the story it's getting weirder and weirder and weirder and all the details keep coming out and none of uh, none of them are actually clarifying in in any positive way what happened all the details that come out just makes the situation more and more strange so i mean at first we had we had this kid that somehow just got up on the roof okay that's really weird i mean it's it's a roof 150 yards away or, or or a little less than that that is the exact place the exact place a counter sniper team should have been it's obvious anybody knows that a child could look at a map and go yeah why wasn't why wasn't there police right there also, the water towers, the highest vantage point for miles around. There should have been somebody there. Even if they didn't have a firearm, or at least a, armed with a pair of binoculars. Someone standing there like this, being like, yep, it all looks good. Everything's fine. You know, with the radio being like, yep, it's all. They could have been like, oh, yeah, there's a dude down there that I don't recognize. When this happened, I thought, like, a lot of people, that it's obvious. It's some massive amount of incompetence. You know, DEI, all of these women are bumbling around, but obviously DEI has its own part of the puzzle. But DEI has nothing really to do with the, the critical failure. It's almost like the media wanted to be like, ooh, DEI will be the red meat, will throw the conservatives because they hate that stuff. We don't want to actually look into the deep part of, of, of where this went wrong, so we'll throw them something that's not actually the problem, but something they love to bitch about. And so the media's running with, with DEI. It wasn't DEI. We have Dan Bongino, who I trust when it comes to matters of secret service, considering he was a member of and still has good friends in. Dan Bongino says, uh, yeah, something went wrong. Really wrong. As in, police were supposed to be there. Local police were supposed to be on that roof. 
the way everyone thinks they should have been on that route. <laughs> they just didn't show up. They just they didn't show up. That doesn't happen. I mean, if they didn't show up. Where else does this police service not show up? What other duties does this police service skip out on? Who are the officers supposed to be there? Are they even still alive? I mean, every weird piece that we get to the story just it breeds more questions. Not only did they not show up, completely abandoning their post, the Secret Service who is basically the managerial agency, didn't bother to check to make sure that they did show up. It would be, it would be the equivalent of your, I don't know, your, your Starbucks barista. I don't, I don't know why that's coming to my head, but your Starbucks barista not showing up. And then the manager who's at the, you know, at the Starbucks in the back office or whatever, not bothering to check. To make sure any of the employees even arrive for their shift. At some point, you have to go, hey, where are you? Why aren't you there? And then so we have, we have cons conspiracies of, 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 of the officer who, who like climbed up the ladder before four crooks took the shot and was all like, hey, you. And then crooks turns around and points the gun at him. The officer like jumps down. All kinds of questions are there about like, well, why why didn't you get trump off the stage where what was the was there a radio call if there was what did it say if the official thing is that oh yeah because he was holding on to the roof with two hands when crooks turned the gun on him he let go and he fell off the roof or whatever okay that's reasonable that's not unreasonable however the first thing that you need to do is hey the guy with the gun you know somebody get trump cover him Get him off stage. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. Like two minutes or whatever went by. There was nothing. And then, so conspiracies. And I use that loosely, I guess, because we conspiracies seem to be turning true. Um, they're theories. We'll just call them theories. The theories are maybe that this guy went up there to be like, hey, you know what? Uh, you got to make a shot quick. Go. Because it only takes one guy to be an inside job. You just need one guy on the inside to make the whole thing an inside job. You got so many pieces that don't matter. Cops, like everyone is, is like taking photos of this guy. There's all kinds of photos. The snipers are eyeing him. Every, everyone knows. Everyone knows this guy is there. The, the crowd knows. The police know, the Secret Service know, the, the, the snipers, everybody knows this guy is there. And, and we find out that he's been there for hours. He's been there for hours. So we have this. Thomas Crooks pictured almost an hour before he shot Trump. Sniper identified gunman acting suspiciously, checking his cell phone and range finder at rally when they took a photo. A range finder? What are you doing? Finding a range. Like, that's suspicious. It's weird. But see, it gets, it gets worse than that. So they actually knew about this guy three hours. Three hours beforehand. That's, that's when Secret Service actually first got a glimpse of this guy being weird. So the parents of Donald Trump's would-be assassin... Thomas Matthew Crooks called the cops to say he was missing before the, the shooting. So police knew that something was up, that this guy was, was, was being weird. He was being suspicious and he was missing. Now, it's fair. At that point, they, they didn't know, oh, he's going to try and assassinate the former president, the future president. So, I mean, they had, they had ample warning that something was bizarre. It follows another stunning development that the 20-year-old gunman was at the former president's rally three hours before opening fire and sparked the suspicions of the Secret Service because he was carrying a rangefinder used by hunters to take long shots. It's just absolutely stunning to me. And so three hours beforehand, they knew this guy was lurking. Three hours. But now this story, it's breaking news. Trump shooter Thomas Crooks seen at rally an hour before 
in in a in a shocking new video. So one hour plus before shooting, Crook's walking around um, the building looking up. So he's scoping out the roof. He's looking for axes up the roof. A lot of people said that he climbed up on, on a ladder. There's also now reports that he actually climbed up on, on an AC unit and, and hopped up. Either way is bad. So you see him. He's just there. Loitering about. It, it, it's only an eight-second video, but there he is. And everyone is wondering, what is this guy doing? The crowd knew something was suspicious. This report from Colin Rogg says new close-up footage shows that Thomas Crook's shot was perfectly centered in the middle of Trump's head. In video footage filmed by C3P meme, Trump could be seen doing a similar head tilt as he did quite literally dodged a bullet. A combination of Trump tilting his head sideways to look at the graphic on screen along with him leaning on the, on the microphone saved him his life the footage was filmed just seconds before the shot was taken so they obviously lined up where the bullet hit his ear and then went back one one moment to how he was before and he was literally going for the headshot center mass of his head and donald trump looking at a thing saved his life Colin Rogg then goes on to say this debunks the BS argument of, oh, any person who has who has shot a gun before would easily make that shot at 130 yards. The shot was perfect. Trump just moved. So Thomas Crooks pictured almost an hour before he shot Trump. Sniper identified gunmen acting suspiciously, checking his cell phone and a range finder at rally when they took the photo. So this image here on screen is his bicycle with his backpack and all of that stuff, which was recovered close to the scene. So he pedaled there on his bike. But what about his car with the bomb in it? See, these are the things. So we find out that he's got a bike with a bag where he kept his gun. I assume it was disassembled, and so he had to assemble it. But what about the car he drove that had the bomb in it, which I suspect was supposed to be for a distraction purpose? Every time a new puzzle piece is entered, only there's, there's more questions. It's, it's the strangest thing. The gunman was also acting strangely around metal detectors that attendees were forced to walk through before entering the event grounds. Witnesses said that Crooks was furiously checking his phone and operating a range finder. He attempted entry around this point, but set the detectors off and was refused. How were there two sniper teams on Donald Trump's security detail and both had clear sight of building Thomas Crook's scale to take aim? The snipers looked right at him. They even made eye contact with him up there and they didn't do anything. And then the bullet shot and then they returned fire immediately. How, how is that possible? It has emerged that two Secret Service sniper teams were scouting Trump's security and both appeared to be trained on the building where Thomas Crooks managed to carry out his assassination attempt on the former president during a rally on Saturday night. Less than two minutes before the gunfire erupted at Butler, Pennsylvania rally, the teams appeared to be positioning themselves to face the direction of the shooter. Footage showing the two teams of agents armed with their sniper rifles but not shooting Crooks had already fired shots at the former president and raised questions around the Secret Service's security footprint. Like, they were looking right at him. Here's these photos. Here's the two teams. It's the two buildings behind Trump. They're looking literally at the dude. Here's, here's the map. Literally, the two buildings behind Trump. Team one, team two, looking exactly at the dude. This is, and you can see the, the water tower up, up here in the back. A dude should have been on there with like binoculars. That's the, that, that's the highest vantage point for miles around. One minute and 32 seconds before shots were heard, footage captured the moment two Secret Service sniper teams moved into place on roofs behind the former president. One team, um, well, one team on each building. And they did nothing. And here is an, an example here. Insider reveals how Secret Service really screwed up before Trump assassination um, bid and role women DEI hires played to put lives at risk. Secret Service Director Kim Cheadle landed job 
after push by Jill Biden's office. Jill Biden wanted a DEI hire. She wanted a woman to run the Secret Service. And so Jill Biden got exactly what she wanted. Now, Secret Service Director Kimberly Cheadle is blasted for stupidity and BS excuse that snipers were not on the roof used by gunman Thomas Crook because it was too slope. Now, obviously, that roof was damn nearly flat. Adam Carolla says that if you had hit a golf ball up there, it would have taken it two days to roll down because that's how sloped it wasn't. We had just seen two sniper teams behind Donald Trump looking right at Thomas Crooks. They were on very, very sloped roofs. So obviously, Secret Service Director Kimberly Cheadle is, is lying. Now, at first, the first press conference, they said, oh, yeah, it was uh, the local police department's screw up. And everyone was like, what? What does that mean? And then they were like, uh, um, I mean, what we mean is this, the, 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 it was too sloped. Too sloped. Well, what happens is if you can't get people up there, you do something else. You put a banner. I mean, because it's the line of sight that matters, right? It's the line of sight. Can I fire a weapon from here and hit the target? Well, you can't if there's, I don't know, a giant banner, a MAGA banner, a, 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 an American flag, something. If they're like, this is the perfect position for somebody to, to shoot a target, we need to either have somebody there or we need to have that line of sight eliminated. They didn't do that. So even if it was too sloped, which it wasn't, it was significantly less sloped than the, than the roofs that the other agents were on. Um, they should have covered that. Like, it's not. That's Police 101. The Secret Service Director Kimberly Cheadles has been slammed for her stupidity and BS excuse that snipers were not present on the roof used by would be assassin Thomas Crooks because it was too sloped. Speaking to ABC News on Tuesday, Cheadle claimed the agents were not positioned on top of the. The, the sloped building, deeming it too dangerous. Despite images from the scene showing Secret Service snipers set up on a sloped roof behind where Trump was delivering his speech. Former Army Ranger Sean Powell was among those who registered his outrage with Cheadle's BS excuse, a, uh, a rage in a rage filled tweet. Holy shit, a sloped roof? That is a total BS excuse, he wrote. Our snipers used to be set in on mountaintops in Afghanistan. On the down slopes, if need be, the stupidity of the statement explains so much of why shit hit the fan that day. Absolute incompetence, he added. Following Cheadle's bizarre comments, a former U.S. senator from South Carolina, Jim DeMint, also weighing in that the, this sad excuse of, um, about defies believability. They're like, this sloped roof here, as you can see the officers on, is significantly more sloped, and it's not even that sloped compared to this one that is significantly less sloped. Instead of placing her snipers on the roof of the American Glass Research Building in Butler, Pennsylvania, where Crooks fired from, she made the decision to secure the building from the inside. That particular Sorry, that building in particular has a sloped roof at his, its highest point, she claimed. And so, you know, there's a safety factor that would be considered there that we wouldn't want to put somebody up on a sloped roof. I, and so, you know, the decision was made to secure the building from the inside. Now, there's a safety factor, which is interesting because the United States Secret Service, their main job is to literally take a bullet. Their job is to get shot up to protect somebody. Being on a slope roof is significantly more safe than being the people that throw themselves on top of the protectee, like taking a bullet. It's nonsense. It is, other, it, it is utter nonsense. So what she is, is talking about is sniper team was inside the building where, where Trump shooter Thomas Matthew Crooks opened fire from and cops spotted him minutes before. So the team, there's pl police inside the building. That is such an embarrassment. Absolute embarrassment.
Witnesses also begged law enforcement to act when they saw him clamber onto the roof with his AR-style rifle. Rifle, but the, the lapse in security meant he was able to carry out his bid. But now her comments have been heavily criticized by members of the public, with many dubbing a theory that a uh, total BS excuse that defies believability. The lapse in security allowed would-be assassin crooks to evade both police and the Secret Service, despite being flagged as suspicious. Remember, for an inside job to take place, you only need one person, one person, one decision to deflect the situation just a little bit so a thing happens. Could she be the inside person? Could, could, um, could Kimberly Cheadle be that person who decided, I won't, I won't make sure the snipers are on the roof. I won't. Make sure that they're up there. Could she be the inside person? I don't know. Because we have we have her saying, Oh yeah, I I I made sure that they were inside the building. But then we have unimpeachable sources from Dan Bongino saying that was a local police post and they were supposed to be there. And they didn't show up. They're lying. Here's the other piece of news you're going to hear for the first time here. I am hearing from very reputable, again, unimpeachable sources that the failed Secret Service director is being silenced right now by the Biden administration and DHS Secretary Mayorkas. They are coming out to defend her publicly. Why? Because, uh, hey, Paula, this is my friend, uh, Ed. It's, it's a guy in a white jacket. Can you bring him in? He's a good friend. Sorry, folks. This guy, I love this guy. We used to work together in the Secret Service. He's outside. He's got a white jacket on. Here's what I'm hearing. They are being silenced. They are silencing the Secret Service director. It is not an accident that Mayorkas came out publicly defending her, Cheadle. She knows where all the cookies are in the cookie jar. They know if she goes rogue right now, everything I told you is going to come out in the wash. The failure to secure Mar-a-Lago proper, uh, properly, the repeated turning down of additional security assets, she know, they know this is going to come out in the wash. So they're silencing her right now. I'm getting this from the highest levels. They told her, shut up or your job is at stake. Was that the police that was supposed to be up top? Did Kimberly Cheadle tell the police that was supposed to be up top that they needed to be in the building? Could this be her fault? I don't know. Because allegedly, Kimberly Cheadle likes to talk a lot of, a, a lot of smack. She's a, a political individual. If you're the Secret Service, I don't think you're supposed to be that outwardly political. And she is, uh, she is a Democrat. She is a liberal, and 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 she makes things political. Or, I mean, this this is what I've heard from from people who know her. So I don't know. Everything about this is wrong. the The opportunity to stop this came a uh, hundred different times, and each time. They were wrong. So there is this expression that a broken clock is right twice a day. That is only if that clock is stopped. What if you have a clock that's not stopped? And maybe the clock loses 10 seconds here. Two seconds there. Lost just last three seconds. It's broken. But it's never correct. Even when it's time to be correct, it lost. Too many seconds. And so it's wrong. It's always wrong. That's called fractal wrongness. When you are wrong on every conceivable level, you zoom in and you're wrong. You zoom out and you're wrong. You're just always wrong at every conceivable time. This situation could have been mass incompetence on a massive scale, or it's JFK2 electric boogaloo. And for us to, to really believe that this was massive incompetence, that's going to require us to accept the fractal wrongness. And I can't do it. I can't do it. It, it's, it doesn't work. It doesn't make sense. It defies all statistical probability. And that only leaves JFK2 electric boogaloo.
If that's the case, I don't think they're done. The machine is still churning behind closed doors. People are still going to be planning. They're, they're probably just going to do it a different way. A way that won't be foiled by a, a, a Donald Trump head move. I, I, pr I pray to God that's not the case. But that is what I fear. Anyways, thank you for watching this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace.